At the end of last year, my neighbor asked me if I would prune down a gigantic fig tree growing in her side yard. That's this tree right here. Oftentimes we see things on YouTube or we read about them and we don't actually see the follow-up. So I thought today would be a good time to take a look at this tree and see how it's recovered from what was an incredibly severe pruning. Before the tree was way up in there and spreading way out over here and a lot of it was unreachable and it had shaded this entire area and it was dark and we took it way, way down. And now it was not the right time of year ideally to take a tree down like that because we were getting into the fall and there's a risk when you cut a tree. If you're gonna cut a tree back, I would recommend doing it right before it wakes up in the spring. So when it's fully dormant, you can coppice or pollard a tree often and it will recover depending on the species because a lot of the energy of it is down there in the roots and it's not up in the top and it's asleep. So it gets pruned and it wakes up and it goes, oh, I just need to regrow. The sap rises and it does excellently. However, she had asked me if I would cut it back then and I was afraid of somebody else cutting it and didn't want to lose it. So I said, okay, we'll do it and we'll hope for the best. But as you can see, it's not only grown back very nicely, it's actually at a really good height for harvesting and it's got figs all over it. There are figs everywhere. One of the great things about figs and pruning them back is that they fruit on the new growth. So there are figs all over this thing. There's figs here, there are figs coming in here. There are figs on a lot of this new growth. I mean, there's gonna be a bumper crop of figs. It's no fear that because we cut it way back, we're not gonna get any figs. There are figs and figs and figs. Almost every one of these branches has figs all over it. And sometimes cutting a tree back like this actually revitalizes it and makes it grow even more than you would expect. You can see here that some of these branches that were on the inside died back and did not like being pruned, but it grew from further down. This is probably a side effect of it having been cut at the wrong time of the year. It just decided to kick off some of that growth and grow from lower down. But now we have a very pickable fig tree that's at bush height instead of it way being all overhead. And now if you wanted to cover this tree to keep the birds out of it, you could do that. Or you can just bring your kids over. Can you pick that tree? Look at you could pick this tree. Look at very, very, you're really chill about it. Baby Jenny just wanted to come over and see what I was doing. So my camera lady could film. But I think this, this looks great. And now it's like having a little fig hedge. And it's hard to believe that all this is just one tree with how much it is bushed out and become this gigantic hedge of figs. So that was my quick fig update. Don't be afraid to make your trees small and to just go ahead and prune them if they need to be pruned. Don't give up on them. And if you want to kind of get a better idea how to prune and keep them under control, I highly recommend Ann Ralph's book, Grow a Little Fruit Tree, which I will link below this video. Also, my grocery row gardening system relies on keeping trees small and keeping them in hedges, basically, like a food forest under control, as I put it in a previous video. And you can get a copy of Grocery Row Gardening at the link below. And also, I gotta thank my dad for this shirt. My stepdad gave me this shirt. My stepdad, my father-in-law dad. My father-in-law dad, who I always call dad. Check it out, I put hot sauce on my hot sauce. Until next time, may your thumbs, can you do the thumbs? Thumbs always be green. That's, you can do your thumbs like that. I'm gonna do it.